Good morning. Today is the day after the election, and many people are excited, many people are disappointed. Someone, one of the famous Greek philosophers, said this way, that democracy is the result of he who shouts the loudest. loudest. Actually, the whole idea here is that in a democracy, because we are a democracy, demo, crisis, people leading, is that someone will lose. And it's okay that someone loses. We may not always get what we want. None of us get what we'd want or desire. Remember Christmases where you wanted X and X didn't come? Remember those times when you asked for something and the answer was no or wait? Because we don't always get what we want. But in the middle of this, those of us who are excited, those of us who are disappointed, those of us who are going to wish this was over with already, because of all the political pressures, all of the things that have gone on in the last year, year and a half, regarding politics, regarding isms, regarding a culture, regarding this pandemic, we all look for hope. We always look for things. And so, okay, the election is winding down. In a few days, we will know the winners of all the races. That's a good thing. But what happens next? is what is very important. Why? Because what we need to do as Christians, as the children of God, as the people of God, as those who are called by his name, we need to have a different agenda. Our agenda now needs to be healing. It needs to be peace. It needs to be reconciliation. How do we get there? We get there because in the next few days, we're going to talk about just that, healing, peace, and reconciliation. Today, we're going to talk about what happens with bad news. In the wonderful, wonderful Broadway adaptation of The Wizard of Oz called um, The Wiz, the evil witch has a wonderful song. It's called, Don't Bring Me No Bad News. And the idea there with Don't Bring Me No Bad News is, I don't want bad news. Because when you bring me bad news, I'm going to be upset with you. I am going to rip your head off. I'm going to do things to you that you don't want to know. Don't bring me no bad news. I like that for good English. <laughs> but what does God say? Because the Father knows that we're human. The Father knows we have feelings. The Father knows that we are, our feelings are easily crushed and hurt. But he encourages us. In Psalm 112, one of my dear friends called me a few days ago and said, hey, I listened to your devotion. And I was reading in Psalm 112 what God says about bad news and what the righteous is. I said, okay. And he read it to me and I'm going, yes, that's exactly what we need to hear today. Because some of us got bad news. Some of us got good news. But whether it's good news or bad news, the Father speaks into our hearts just the same. Why? Because the Father is not a Republican. Sorry. The Father's not a Democrat. Sorry. The Father's not a Libertarian. Sorry. The Father's not an Independent. Sorry. Because God is God. And he is above this. Yet He speaks into our hearts right where we are, no matter what our leanings. Because He wants us as His children to live and walk by a different agenda. So what does it say? Psalm 112. We're going to look at verses 4 through 8. <clears throat> Excuse me. The light shines in the darkness for the upright. God is gracious, compassionate, and righteous. Light shines in the darkness. It may feel like it's dark out there. But remember, we walk with the light of Christ in us. We walk with the light of Christ around us. Because God is gracious and generous and compassionate, righteous. He knows how you feel this morning. He says, I am with you. Relax. Walk in my light. Verse 5. It goes well for a person who is gracious and lends. He will maintain his cause in the judgment. What's the idea behind that verse? It's the idea that the Father has gifted me with things, and therefore, I need to be gracious. I need to be gracious in this time. Because some of my friends are angry. Which means that they're getting to healing and peace. That means I may need to confess. I may need to ask for forgiveness because I may have vilified my friends. I may have demon, demonized them. Gracious 
I need to lend to them the support that they need because the Father will maintain my cause in the judgment. And then here it is, verse 6. You will never be shaken because the, his righteousness will be remembered. Yes, there may be bad news, but you're not shaken. Remember, Paul? Okay, we're perplexed, we're not crushed. Cast down, but not destroyed. Because the Father is with us. Therefore, he says, you will not be shaken. Verse 7 says, you will not fear bad news. So if there's bad news this morning, don't fear. Because remember, the Father calls us to be aphobos, which is against fear. Why? Because he has placed his spirit within us, his spirit of confidence, his spirit of discipline, his spirit of a sound mind. That's what Paul tells Timothy. He tells that same thing to us. Don't fear. Why not? Why do we not fear bad news? First of all, because our heart is steadfast. It means my heart is not movable. Because the next clause there in this verse is, I trust in the Lord. Yeah, the politics may not be what I want them. That's okay. God is in charge. My heart is steadfast. Why? Because I trust in God. I know that He is in charge, no matter what goes on. I know that no matter what is happening around me, I am still safe in my Father's hand. I know there are times when we're afraid, there are times when we're anxious, there are times when we don't know what to do. The Father says, crawl into my lap and let me speak here to you now. Why? Because you are trusting in me. I want your heart to be steadfast, to be immovable. Verse 8, his heart is firm. Now, if my heart is steadfast, because it's beating all the time, I'm trusting in the Father, yet there's times when my mind gets a little worried, and that begins to speak to my heart, and my heart begins to waver, and I'm not quite sure what to do, that my heart becomes firm. Which means my heart becomes still. Because when my heart becomes still there, then I'm resting in the Father. I'm relying on Him and His graciousness, His compassion, His righteousness, His gentleness. I don't fear the bad news. My heart is steadfast because I trust in the Father. My heart is firm. My mind is made up. I'm going to trust and follow what the Father says do in this situation. I will not fear. Fear for us often is a decision. Yes, it comes quickly. We have seconds, not nanoseconds sometimes, to decide. Now, this isn't fight or flight, flee or flight. No, this is whether we're going to live in fear or not. That's a decision. If I'm trusting the Father, then my decision is, I will not fear. Psalm helps us here, Psalm 24. Though the earth shake, though the waters foam, foam at the roaring tide. In this will I be confident. I will not be shaken. I will not move. Why? Because of what the Father is doing around me, what the Father is doing with me. Because remember, no matter what our circumstance, the Father says, do not fear. Because every time the Father says, do not fear, what he's really saying is, trust me. I will walk through this process with you. Even if times get rougher, the Father says, I am still here walking with you. Even though there may be times of jubilation and celebration, the Father still says, I am here with you. What happens with the righteous? Remember, he shines his light in the darkness for us because he's gracious, compassionate, righteous. We don't fear bad news. Because our hearts are steadfast. We trust in the Lord. Our hearts, our minds are firm. We will not fear. Jesus, these are hard times for us. And Lord, today some of us may have received bad news. But Lord, we give that to you. Because Lord, we stand on your word, your promises. That Lord, we don't have to fear. Because Lord, you are with us. And that Father, everything is in your hands. And so, Father, we rest there because, Lord, you are indeed our gracious, compassionate, righteous. So, Father, protect us in the days to come. And, Lord, help us to get to healing. 
to peace, to reconciliation. These things, Lord, we pray in your holy, your mighty, and your blessed name, Jesus. Amen. Be blessed today, my dear friends.